Sometimes it's easy to know the wise choice. Take these two food choices, for example. One is fast food with all its crazy goodness just waiting to clog your arteries, and the other is this wonderful salad. Now, as good as this fast food might taste, over time, a steady diet of fried chicken and fries might lead to some health problems. In this case, the healthy choice is the wise choice. But what happens when the wise choice isn't so easy to spot? Well, for an adult, this might be the choice between two good job offers or which neighborhood to raise a family. For a kid, this might be deciding who to sit with at lunch, which party invitation to accept when both invitations are from good friends who just happen to schedule their parties at the same time, or, or even deciding which summer camp to attend. You weigh the pros and cons of each choice. You seek guidance from close friends, family, or mentors. You even take time to pray about it. And in the end, you go with your gut, trusting that the choice you made is best. Yet somewhere in the back of your mind, you wonder, ah, is your gut all that trustworthy? See, wisdom isn't always cut and dry. As our kids grow up, they'll soon learn that not every decision they have to make is as black and white as we might like. That's why giving kids a strong foundation of wisdom is important. We want them to be equipped to face down whatever choice they might face in the future. So we're taking the next several weeks to talk about wisdom. We define wisdom as finding out what you should do and doing it. We're hoping to help kids dig deep into the Bible and discover some of God's wisdom along the way. After all, finding wisdom isn't so difficult. All you have to do is look, and what they find will be a valuable treasure that God wants to give them. Like James says in our memory verse for the month, chapter one, verse five, if any of you needs wisdom, you should ask God for it. He will give it to you. God gives freely to everyone and doesn't find fault. And we'll start the hunt for wisdom with a familiar moment from Jesus' life when he was a boy. In Luke 2, we find Jesus in his father's house. He knew this is where he needed to be in order to gain wisdom and understanding. We learn that Jesus grew in wisdom as well as in his relationships with others and God. For the rest of the month, we'll help kids discover the wisdom in the choices they make, the friends they find, and the life they can live trusting God. With those ideas in mind for week two, we head to Proverbs 22.3. A prudent man sees danger and takes refuge, but the simple keep going and suffer for it. Or, in other words, look before you leap. We don't want children to simply think about what's right and wrong. Rather, we want them to understand what is wise. And wisdom is connected to the words given to them by a loving God who has their best interest in mind. See, when you tiptoe closer to that line between right and wrong, you end up in trouble. Instead, wisdom tells you to back away from the danger and run in the opposite direction. In week three, we'll continue the hunt for wisdom with something else Solomon wrote in Proverbs 13:20. He who walks with the wise grows wise, but a companion of fools suffers harm. We'll see what happened with one of Solomon's sons, a young man by the name of Rehoboam. See, the story of Rehoboam is an interesting story because here was a young man who, once he got the advice of his elders, disregarded and ignored the advice and listened to his peers and friends. The consequences were devastating. We simply want children to understand that it is very important that they seek wisdom from the right people, the kind of people who care about them because they care about their relationship with God. Finally, we'll look at Proverbs 3, 5 through 6, where Solomon wrote, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. In all your ways, obey Him. Then He will make your paths smooth and straight. When it comes to wisdom, we want every child to grow up and say, I can trust God no matter what. And because of how they trust Him, they'll also realize they can treat others the way they want to be treated and make wise choices regardless of their circumstances. The principle is simply this. When a child realizes how much Jesus really loves them, what he did so they could have a relationship with God. And when that child makes a relationship with God and his words a priority in his or her life, then they will have the power and wisdom they need to live out a bigger and better story.
Mach's gut. Mhm.